and we are ready to go live here on the Creative Hive Facebook page. Man, another week is flying by, but we get to talk about something really fun today. It's called Loonies for Lips, so that's a little bit of foreshadowing. But we also get to learn about CNIB and what this foundation does, who the who they help, and the great work that they're always doing, not only, you know, in awareness, and but also in raising funds and their employment programs. I mean, sometimes you don't know all the crazy good things that are happening right within this community. So we have Leanne and Christopher is here. Let's bring him in. Three, two, one. Boom. Three, two. Perfect. Boom. There we go. Everybody's here. Christopher, can you turn your phone this way? Oh, and he disappeared. Oh. He'll come back. I, I fully believe that he will. So we are welcome. We have Leanna and Christopher here today. Leanna, tell us a little bit about who you are, and we'll start with your role at CNIB, and then we'll go a little bit backwards. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I actually do community outreach and uh, engagement for a specific program at the CNIB, which is uh, it's a, a separate program from the one we're talking about today. Um, so I manage the uh, the Phone It Forward program for CNIB, um, but I got pulled into Loonies for Lips because of my background in outreach. So um, this was a uh, the perfect project really for somebody like me <laughs> who loves Facebook Lives, among other things. Um, yeah, and I've been with CNIB just a little over a year now and, and, and love it. I love the work that uh, that we do as an organization. It's very powerful and, and real incredible. For someone who doesn't know, and there is somebody out there who doesn't know what CNIB does and who CNIB is as an organization, can you tell us that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so CNIB Foundation, we've been around for just a little over 100 years, so we are quite long standing as far as uh, as far as charities go which is incredible in and of itself um, and what we do is we uh, provide resources for Canadians who are living with vision loss so anyone who is blind or partially sighted in Canada um, we you know if they need anything in in terms of employment support um, support in general that that's really what we do is we we help them with um, really the a to uh, to Z components of, uh, of what that might look like you know, and the work is much more than behind the scenes. You guys work so much with people day to day. Let's try and bring Chris back in here. He'll, he'll pop in there again. Let's see. Three, two, one. Let's go, Chris. You got this. We're going to flip it around again. Boop. All right, Chris, I need you to turn your phone this way. Got to turn it, eh? Like you're looking at a TV. Nope. You know, Horizontal. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. And I'm going to get you to back up a little bit because we're seeing you pretty close. Just scoot your chair back. There we go. See, I can't see like, it. It's not showing it to me, so I don't, I'm going blind here, literally. Oh, okay. Well, don't worry. You look good. You're good. You're in the screen. You got this. How are you this morning, Chris? I'm doing great. How are you, Des? Thanks for doing this with us. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry to interrupt hey. what Leanna was doing. I know she was smoking this right now. Oh, she's <laughs> great to chat with. We're very excited to welcome you. Chris, tell us about your role at CNIB and, you know, the importance of continuing to connect to the community that you guys help so often. Uh, thanks, Des. Uh, so my name is Christopher and I am the program lead for community education uh, in southern Alberta, although I'm recently adopting out northern Alberta because one of my colleagues left. Um, so I'm all over the province right now and I'm community education and community engagement is what I do. I'm out there a lot seniors home schools, all these places talking about CNIB, raising awareness, letting people know that um, blindness is not the end of the world. I'm actually legally blind myself. Uh, so I get to talk about CNIB from firsthand experience. And it has been uh, a wonderful experience to be a spokesman for the, for the organization. I'd like to know for both of you, I mean, I always find it so fascinating how people end up where they are. So tell me, Liana, you know, how did your path get to CNIB? What led you this direction? Oh, that's a great question, Des. Thanks. Um, so I actually sort of fell onto CNIB back when I was uh, um, in university days. I had a professor actually who had worked with the CNIB many, many years before um, I had considered even the program I was in. Um, and uh, she spoke about the organization so highly um, all the time and just had, had nothing but good things to say about CNIB and the work that they do for uh, Canadians with vision loss. So when I um, you know, started my my own job search here in Alberta and in Calgary, um, it seemed like the perfect fit. You know, it all kind of came back to me and I thought, 
this is going to be a place that I want to work. Um, and when I did my interview process and meeting the whole team, I just thought, you know what, here's a group of people that is so driven and so focused and so passionate about what they do for not only their peers, but, you know, the, the, the clients that we serve. And, and a lot of times with C within CNIB, the two overlap. You know, we we have a lot of uh, I have a lot of colleagues who um, you know are blind or partially sighted, and it's just uh, incredible to see the things that they do. Some of them are even better with technology than I am, and I wish that was you know an overstatement, but it's not. Go, How do I do this? You do know I'm I'm <laughs> you have better vision than me. I'm going I know, but you have better technology than me. So um, yeah, that's pretty much my story. I kind of fell into it, but it was that professor in college who. Um, just raved about the CNIB, and I thought this is a place that I that I need to that I need to be. So you found your home. You knew where you wanted to be, Chris. For you, how does it make you feel to be part of an organization like this and know how many people that you get to help? Oh, he went away. Is he coming back? I've got a black screen on my side. Me too. All right, we're gonna pop him over. Oh, there we go. Hi, Chris, you're back. That's so exciting. <laughs> Chris, how does it make you feel to be a part of CNIB and on all the work that they do? Oh, we're not hearing you now, Chris. I'm going to have to pop you off to the side. Sorry. Oh, there. All right. So we'll see if we can get him to work again here. Tend to load back on. There we go. All right. So, Leanna, you got there. You found your home mm -hmm. and you became a part of this community. Once you got into that community and you saw up front who they were helping give people an idea this isn't just one or two people this is hundreds thousands of people as you, as you guys do this yes yes we so we're a national organization so we have offices right across the board um, we help in every single province um, and our reach you know even though our office in alberta we've got one in edmonton we've got one in calgary we're helping clients we're helping participants in red deer in um, you know, Rocky, Rocky Mountain House, Airdrie, that's not far from Calgary, but, um, you know, in, in all these smaller regions as well uh, is really where we're going because we want to make sure that every Canadian with vision loss is receiving the same quality of care and resources as anybody else um, in, in Canada. So um, our reach is, is quite vast, quite, uh, quite out there. Um, and with you know, COVID and everything, we managed to pivot. And there were a lot of programs that we were running. All of our programs actually were face-to-face. -face. So that was anything from a Vision Mate program where, um, you know, individuals can volunteer and, and essentially hang out with somebody with vision loss who's blind or partially sighted and do the same things. So if you, you know, love yoga, um, we would pair you up with somebody who also loves yoga who has vision loss. So that would be kind of a cool activity to get involved with. So all of those things actually moved to a virtual model and we managed to, um, you know, actually engage with a lot of different clients from across the country that we hadn't been engaging with previously or hadn't been engaging with us just by saying, hey, you know, there's a certain level of isolation that um, everyone experiences, especially with COVID, but there's certainly another level of isolation that someone who's blind um, or partially sighted is going to experience without a global pandemic. So just to be able to go to the grocery store, pick up a box of, of cereal or you know couscous or whatever it is to be able to read the ingredients or know what brand you're looking for, um, you know, you can't do that in a pandemic. So um, we would pair them up with a vision mate virtually, something as simple as using FaceTime on your phone, right? Um, to be able to connect with them and say, oh, yep, that's the right brand of, of couscous or toothpaste or cereal or whatever it is you're looking for. So we pivoted and we made um, all of our programs that we could, uh, we put them onto a virtual model. So we're still able to reach um, that client base and make sure that they are getting the support that they need. It's incredible to see how everybody, you know, when this pandemic first hit, it was that scramble. Oh my goodness, what are we gonna do? Mm -hmm. But my goodness, I, I'm going to take a line from, from my friend, Dr. Joy Carrington. We are wired for hard things. She is so darn right when she says that, that we can do this. We might not like doing it, but we can do this. And Chris, you know, you're a perfect example too of somebody who is really in there finding fun, innovative ways to get messages out and raise awareness. We're here to talk about loonies for lips today. Chris, tell us what that is. Welcome back. Thanks. Sorry about that. You know, one of the things these things are not always good at is multitasking. Uh, when a when a phone call comes in, it totally disrupts this. Anyway, um, Loonies for Lips. Loonies for Lips is a program that we are doing to um, raise awareness of CNIB, also to raise money 
uh, for our employment programs because um, you know the, the team, uh, as Leanna may have already mentioned, and I'm sorry I was missing part of it, but as as the team was trying to come up with new and innovative ways to raise money in this time of the pandemic when uh, donations and fundraising are down and a lot of events have had to be canceled, the team was trying to come up with something new. And one of the things that came up in a discussion was, you know, one of the female members of the team said that she has asked all the time, how does she apply her makeup when she's blind? And so that sort of spun this out that they went, oh, you know, let's do that. Let's do like a lipstick challenge. And, and so Loonies for Lips was born um from that um because it is it's one of those things that uh, many of my female colleagues are asked very often even myself as a male i'm asked very often how how do you shave to go to work um ah, okay you know but not things you know, we know we, but we, don't think about it, well exactly right and and the part of that is the um you know we couldn't in, in trying to come up with and turn that into some sort of a challenge we couldn't exactly ask women to start growing a beard um, and try shaving. So we went the other way and, and, you know, we're asking people to apply lipstick or chapstick, record themselves on video, challenge their friends, similar to other um, social media challenges that you've seen ro rotating around in the last few years. And what is this raising money for? Specifically, I know you guys want to talk about the employment programs. How does this employment program work and how will this money help that program? Perfect question. So the so this is actually, and this is this coincides all very nicely. This is also National Disability um, Employment Awareness Month. It's a bit of a mouthful to spit that one out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. We need <laughs> an acronym for that one. Uh, well, they tried calling it NDEM, but that doesn't really work. No. There's some acronym you can't make a word. Um, but anyway, so it, it con so coincides nicely with that. And so what it's going to do is it's going to fund um, our, our career services programs because we do a number of things in those programs, uh, everything from helping our, our job seekers who maybe have never found a job, but you know they're, they're working age and they want to find a job. So we're helping them get job ready, doing things like resume writing, um, mock interviews, all that kind of stuff, dressed for success. And then you know that we're progressing them through. We're we're also getting them comfortable with the technology that maybe they've never used before, um, you know, so that they can they can use those things in a in a job setting. And then the ones them who kick ass at life. That's right. Exactly. This is what like, we're trying to do. Let's just cut to the chase here. They're going to be ready to rock it out. And what's incredible and everything they want to be. Exactly. And what's incredible in everything that you were saying there is all those different programs are also run here. So dress for success and, and resume building and anything that needs to happen actually can happen in our city. And it's still happening regardless of COVID kind of turning everybody's lives upside down. So Leanna, where can people donate and how can they start this hashtag and video thing? Favorite question <laughs> right there. Um, so there's a couple ways to donate actually. So you can do it directly from your phone, which is fantastic. Who doesn't love that? It gets uh, directly billed back to your cor uh, carrier. Um, so the hashtag there is lips, L-I-P-S, 45678. So just lips, 45678. And that donates $10 to Loonies for Lips. The other alternative is through our website. So cnib.ca slash loonies for lips. Or five, six, eight, did you say? Four, five, six, seven, eight. So four, four two, five, eight. Six, seven, eight. Hashtag four, five, six, seven, eight lips. So lips, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank yeah. goodness you're doing this because I really screwed bit, this up. I'm going to, I'm reason I'm doing, I'm asking you that yeah. over again. I'm going to post that below this on Facebook so that people can easily access that. But I think we need to show them how it's done. So tell me what I need to do. I've got my phone here, so I'll record a little video. And I'm supposed to close my eyes. So if you've got a, a blindfold handy or even got a oh, mask, even better. Look at that. They're multi-purpose. I love that. Well, I got Perfect. your first. Hold on one second. I love that you're doing that part blindfolded. That makes it right all the okay. more authentic. I love it. Okay. Here's the thing. I don't wear lipstick. Okay. Or blistex. So oh, but I, I found myself some red lipstick because if we're going to do this, gonna do it right I we're love gonna it. do this right so this is loonies for lips hashtag loonies for lips we are raising awareness for cnib employment programs and i'm going to challenge you wait for it if you're tagged in this you're in serious trouble <laughs> you, you, you want me to put this on <laughs> i believe oh, it goodness me okay
Okay, I found my lips. Am I close? Can you see? I think so. How did I do? You're stunning. Stunning? Really? Oh, I'm looking now. Can I look? Yes. Yes, you oh can look. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. It's so difficult. This is what happens. And so I think it's very important to know that this isn't an easy thing. So when we're done this, I will be uh, sending pound sign lips four, five, six, seven, eight texts because obviously I know not what I do. <laughs> yeah. I like this yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know what? It's funny because I feel like a lot of people, most people are going to have the same experience, right? We're not used to doing when I, when I see women and, and myself included, put lipstick on in a mirror. We are right in front of it. We've got our mouth open, our eyes wide. We are just ready to take on the world. Um, yeah. you know, but for for someone who's who's blind, they they don't have that same ability. So just by doing that simple trick, you're showing yourself, wow, this actually is, you know, it can be more difficult and it does take practice. Um, so I, I grew up in, in an era without uh, without smartphones. Um, we've got them now, thank heaven. So we have that in our back pocket. But, um, you know, when, when I was younger, I remember doing my lipstick and I would just, I didn't have a compact mirror, so I would practice. So I don't want to say that I've cheated, but I, <laughs> it's a little bit easier, but you have to, it does take a lot of practice, especially on that yeah. top lip. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Blistex girl. Yeah. Also, that is a completely thought but you know what thank you thank you for taking the time to tell us who cnib is who the people are that throw their hearts and souls into everything that you guys are doing every day in our community and for communities across the country it is vitally important to support them and to support them how you can if you can't donate you can do that challenge you can do the loonies for lips challenge and share it and challenge other people. Let's get people talking about this. I'm gonna put that link on our social media as well. We're gonna let you get back at your day because we were both talking about how this Friday has just become a wild one for us. So go back to doing the great work that you do. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. And thank you for sharing how we can all help. Have an awesome day. Thanks, Des. Thanks for having us.